All right, so it's my great pleasure to introduce Anand Pillay from the University of Notre Dame. And he will speak about Feynman's theorem for Cochin's constrained cohomology. Thanks, th thanks for the invitation to, to New York. Thanks a lot for inviting me everybody again. And uh, so this is some, um, this is I'm talking about some work with Omar, <coughs> Leon Sanchez. Really. So I, I had two nice months in Manchester in the summer, and we, and we talked. And they invited me to Manchester, and we had. A, I mean, it's lots of, lots of to talk about that, but mathematics is something we, we did. So first, I'm talking about motivation. I hope I'm going to come in two weeks here, I think. Yeah. Is that right? And, and so I think he'll talk about similar things. He'll talk about... Well, it'll be a complimentary talk about similar things, and so maybe he'll focus on some of the applications. Okay. So motivation... Motiva one, mot one motivation is that certain uh, finer theorems theorems in ordinary Gal so I will define all these things, right? Galois I will define this stuff a bit later. Played an important role in uh, work. In by in so KP is like Kaminsky and me, Kaminsky and myself. I think it appeared in 2016 on uh, uh, on what on what was it about? what was it about on existence on existence of say let's say PV extensions. L of some differential field K, it's differential fields such that CK, constant of K, is existentially closed in L as fields. So there was a, we did something, this is connected with, this is really connected with a lot of work, with work by a lot of other people like Alexei and, uh, and who and who and who, Alexei and, uh, Tell me the names, tell me the names. Alexei and what's his oh, name, him and him. Kuczynski and Gillet. Oh yeah, Gillet. About existence of, we got this extensions where the constants are not algebraic clocks. This is the question. And, uh, and then later, some work by Van der Poort and Crespo and Heito. And so uh, about existence of big up extensions of uh, fields K, where the constants are not algebraically closed. It satisfies certain, like certain properties. Okay, EC means any system essentially closed. To, I'm not going to say what it is. I'm just like, uh, <laughs> it means any, any any system of equations and inequality. Any system of equations and inequations uh, with coefficients here, with a solution here, is a solution here. Right? It's it it it, imp it, 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 it implies relatively algebraically closed. Does it? Yeah, but it's it's much stronger. Anyway, for different reasons, people wanted, people wanted to find these existence theorems for, you know, for PV extensions when the constants are algebraically closed and strong existence theorems, you know, find a PV extension with certain nice properties and uh, uh, under suitable assumptions, right? Under suitable assumptions, under suitable. So this is a, this is a little bit assumptions on the constants of K as a field. In particular, the assumptions were actually CK is extensionally closed in K, and CK is bounded and large. I'll describe these things, but I'll describe these things a bit later, what these properties mean. Uh, uh, and uh, the idea was, idea, uh, so idea we want to, uh, we wanted to, the idea was the motivation. So the idea was to try and prove. Uh, so, like, so we wanted to prove. In play, what we wanted to to prove finite theorems in so-called so constrained or differential Galois cohomology. Differential Galois cohomology. 
uh, so as to partly, partly for intri partly for the intrinsic interest, which I would be interested in, but also to obtain analogous results, analogous results. When I say KP, I'm including, say, Winston yourself, including Van der Poots, Crespo, and Heito for uh, so-called parametrized, parametrized, the parametrized PPV theory. And this is the theory where you have uh, you have a field, you have K, and you have two derivations, Px dt. So commuting derivations, commuting, and, and, and in place of a linear differential equation. So usually, right, a linear differential equation is something like this, dy equals ay. One derivation, that's a linear differential equation, where y is a vector of unknowns, and a is a matrix. It's a linear differential equation. And here you have, uh, and you have equations dx, of y equals a y. An equation, y is a vector, n, a vector, unknown vector, vector unknown, sorry, and a is an n by n matrix, and you have a derivation with respect to dx, right? And so you want to find conditions to have when, you know, when the constants, when, when the dx constants is differentially closed, then you have all the nice properties. It's like being algebraically closed in the, in the, in the ordinary field sense. You want conditions to, again, where this is constants are not differentially closed, to find existence and nice properties of PV extensions, okay? So that was the idea. The idea was to sort of eventually obtain, and this, this idea was for, I mean, three years ago, there were probably a couple of terms in New York in 2016, and we talked about things like that, and we had a plan to do this for a few years, and now we try to implement a little bit of a plan, okay? And I think Ronnie did some things about this, and this is the motivation. Clear? Any questions about this? No? So let's try and, uh, so, so, so the idea is I'll, I'll talk like an hour plus, right? Like plus something like five or 10 or 15 or something, right? So I'll take it easy, I'll take it easy, because yeah. there's quite a few things to say. I may finish early, I'll see, I'll see. there's quite a few things to say. Don't worry, there'll be, there'll be questions, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in fact, Omar, I think, will talk about these applications to the PPV theory in, uh, in two weeks, I think. Right. So the issue is what are the, the issue is what are the conditions? Essentially, we want. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. This is motivation. So okay. Oh, oh, this is this is differential algebra. You know. It's, it's kind of you know what I mean. Yeah. Diff just differential algebra. So uh, algebraic theory, differential equations, and all this. Culture, what culture did, <laughs> what culture was doing. And in fact, this is very connected with culture's ideas. What I'm talking about. So two, we prove. So we prove. Theorem. That's a theorem that I, when Omar said we want to do something like this, and I said, well, what, 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 he said, well, let's try and do that case, special case, and it was obvious, you know, but then, when it turned out, you have to do something still, so that's what I'm talking about. It was like something which I thought was obvious, but, but then you had, to, it wasn't, you had to still do something. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so we prove what? Suppose, to, so putting things about, right, so the thing is, in, the, in this early motivation thing, I think facts about fields, give results about PV extension in one derivation. Facts about differential fields will give analogous results for PV things in two derivations. Okay, this is the analogy. The theorem let so this is about let K delta be a differential field which is Different, which is bounded as a field, and this just means so we can, we're, we're in currency zero. Everything's currency zero. Bounded as a field means uh, finally many extensions of degree n n. 
the wall M. This is, this is the property, this is Sayer's property F. This property F. Bounded field means five extension degree N for every N. And differentially large, in a certain, and differentially large. in the sense of a, a recent paper of uh, Leon Sanchez. Sanchez, Leon Sanchez and Trestle, which I'll describe. Trestle, because you large in a certain sense. Then, uh, is H1, I define everything, H1, Including, including like, even things like which I define all the words, which, which is B. I define all the words. Uh, H1 delta K G is finite for any linear differential algebraic group. G defined over K. So an indifferential algebraic group is just, so typically we work in, in you know, the universe, in the model theory, we have this universal domain stuff, you know, and and you work in some, you know, U is U, U, U a big differentially closed field. And uh, we take G is going to be a subgroup of GLN U for some N defined by differential equations. Defined by differential polynomial equations. Oh, wait, wait, man. Yeah. Uh, so that, uh, that BK in the motivation part is not the same. No. Part. This K is not like the K. This K is like the constants. This K in the motivation part, when you try and apply this to this PPV theory, the role of K is played by the <coughs> DX constants of the other K. <laughs> All right, so you're, you're totally right, which is a DT field. So D would be like D, the, the DT thing. Okay, so this is a differential algebraic group. It's like a definable group, a definable, so, so definable, definable, definable in U plus times with a derivation. Right, it's definable. That's quanti quantifier free definable, or you? It's quite because you have quantified elimination. So, so I'm assuming a little bit about D DCF zero. There's a certain theory. There's a certain beautiful theory called DC right, There's a lot of beautiful theories around. One is the theory of the free group, which is a nice stable theory. It's a beautiful theory. But this is also this. This, this is another stable theory. It's your omega stable, and it has quantified elimination. It's, it's and. and it's omega stable, and it's uh, and the model the, the model theory the model theory of differential closed fields is more or less, in my personal belief, is identical to to Colchin's differential algebraic geometry. It's the same subject, with a little bit with a different with a little bit different sense of humour. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same little different nuance. It's the same subject. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so with Moshe, you were able to do the strongly normal versions. Okay. Yeah, we did a bit more. We did, so with Moshe we talked about strongly normal. In fact, strongly normal is a slight generalization. We, I don't want to get into, into it too much, but it's a... Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, but can you get it in this? In fact, it'll work too, but I don't... Yes, yeah, so strongly normal is... Yeah. Uh, so, so I'm not talking about the motivation so much. I want to focus on just this galcomology, which is interesting for its own right. It, it, it was invented by culture, and I don't think very much, not much was done about it, actually. But, so it's just nice to talk about this stuff in the Colchin seminar. Okay, this is it. So, let's now get and talk about all these, what all the words mean. This is the, this is the theorem, this is the theorem we'll approve, it's a finite theorem. You've got to see what it means. So an differential algebraic group is, uh, for example, a group defined by, uh, a system, a group, a system, take a system of, of uh, homogeneous and differential equations in several variables. This will define a definable subgroup of the additive group to that power. Right, that's an example of, uh, of it. Uh, uh, it could be, yeah. good. Any so, questions? So far, the whole 
theorem is about one derivation. Yeah, but in fact, Omar tells me, it says, let, let's, do it several, several der let's do it for several derivations, you can do it, but I'm allergic to several derivations. <laughs> okay. So I'm not allergic, but I just, you know, I just, there's, there's complications, technical complications with all yeah. things I don't know, like about what are these things like the couch sets, and I'm just going <laughs> no, it's just the stuff which I don't want to think about. <laughs> I get a headache now I think about it. <laughs> anyway, so, so I just, I like, I like just, I like just the one derivation. But that's called to install. Pardon? I know, sorry, anyway, I'm, I'm joking, but anyway, no, it'll work, it works with several derivations, but just we decided to do it in one derivation. Even the application works in, several, in, in, two, in two, not just a dx and dt, but two sets of derivations. Which is the, we should think what Roddy worked in that. So first, let's try and discuss now what everything means. Okay? And then once you see what everything means, then maybe it'll be, we feel this is something interesting. Possibly. So, uh, A. I've got an A, B, C, D. A is Galois cohomology. B is different Galois cohomology. C is something about Ser. D is differentially large. And E is the proof. Right? A, B, C, D, E. That's the idea to get through this stuff. And now I kind of, I'm now a little bit extemporaneous. I just wrote what to talk about, but I didn't write exactly what to say, so I'm going to be, have to improvise a little bit. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to say, Galois cohomology is here, carries to zero. And you have a, a K of field. And G, say an algebraic group over K. Then we have this H1 K G, sometimes called G K, is the Galois cohomology, and this is this is based on from the cohomology point of view, it's defined in terms of in terms of suitable co-cycles from uh, Galois group as they ought K L J over K to the k -alge point, k -alge algebraic closure to the k -alge points of G. That's one definition. But equivalently, it uh, characterizes, right? So we find it was this, and up, up to some notion of, of co cycles being equivalent or something, or trivial co cycles. It's a, it's a point, it's not a group, it's a pointed set. And equivalently, it classifies or describes, classifies the pH, the algebraic PHSs for G over K up to G K isomorphism. So you take your algebraic group G, you take your algebraic group G. Could be linear algebraic group, could be right, could be a video variety, you could be anything. And you take another algebraic variety, X, say, over K. What's, so what's a, P, what's a PHS for G? It's another algebraic variety over K, on which G is acting over K by morphisms regularly, strictly transitively. So acting regularly means it's like a copy of G without the identity. Right? It's a PHS or a Homogeneous, it's more than homogeneous. Homogeneous space means, means G mod means G is acting transitively, it's acting strictly transitively, regularly. So G is acting freely and transitively on X. So PHS for X. <coughs> and for G. And you take two of these things, X and Y, and we call them, and you can talk about whether that defined over K. And you say to be isomorphic is to be. An, uh, an isomorphism of algebraic varieties, which is also respects the G action. I said, over K. Okay, so that so, said okay. So we have an isomorphism. To be isomorphic means isomorphic as algebraic varieties, which respects the action of G. So you have F from X to Y, and G of F of GX equals G of FX. I'm not mistaken. So. What's classified by H1KG is the PHSs 
for algebraic group G over K up to isomorphism. When K is algebraically closed, so, so as soon as, suppose X, suppose you have such a thing X, if XK, if X has a point, implies X is isomorphic to G. Because you take the point, if, K, if, if, if there's a K point, then there's an isomorphism with X and G over K. You just take the K point to identity. Right? And you get an isomorphism. Right? So it's about having, it's about, right? So this is the, this is the, uh, and the point is, yeah, so, so, so that's, that's uh, double homology. And uh, I think the point was, so Sears theorem I mentioned later, is that if K is bounded as a field, which means, I, I mentioned what it is, you have finite distribution degree N for every N, then this is finite for G linear algebraic group. And in the paper with Kaminsky, we actually showed that if you pass the arbitrary algebraic groups, it's actually countable. And this played a role, this played a role in the, in the, in the, in the Galois theory of differential equations because attached to a differential equation, linear or log, log derivative equation over a field K, you get a certain, a certain Galois group point uh, living in the constants of K, defined over the constants of K, and, uh, and, the, and the Galois cohomology, the finest that implies that that group point has finitely many connected components. So this is the relationship with Galois theory. Okay, that's the, the, okay so, so that's... This is, this is, so this is, this is, so, okay, that's it. Any so questions if, about this? If this is finite, what does it say for the classification? It just says it's finitely many. Finitely many classes of... Yeah, so, so H1 being, this is a pointed set. It's a pointed set. <coughs> but when G is abelian, it's a group. When G is abelian, commutative, it's actually a group. When G is a pointed set, <coughs> it's a set with a point, okay? And the point being the isomorphism class of G itself. Uh, and is there a connection? Uh, between, so can one say something finer, uh, in particular to relate uh, the number of extensions, whatever in some way, with the number of isomorphisms? Yeah, models. yeah, exactly. Because it, it, exactly the uh, it, it controls number of yeah, it controls number of extensions of uh, controls the number of yes, it's connected with. You have k. Okay, you have k. You have a linear lin differential equation over k. Say dy equals dy equals uh, dy. Okay, you have the differential equation over k, and you want to look at a PV extension for that differential equation is an extension of k generated which has no new constants, and is generated by a fundamental system of solutions for the linear differential equation. Okay, by basis solutions. By a basis for the for the solutions over the constants, so no new constants. When k is, when c k constants k is algebraically closed, they exist and there's unique. When c k is not algebraically closed, uh, they, they may not exist. But if you have one of them, if you have one, then uh, this has a certain Galois group defined over the constants, and and the other p extensions up to isomorph are classified by the connected components of the CK points of the Galois groupoid. No, sorry, they're controlled by, sorry, sorry, sorry yeah. forget the Galois groupoid. Uh, yeah, so the number of extensions, the P extensions, so you have this Galois group G, so suppose there is a PV extension. L, Galois group is G over C, a constant over G, linear group over CK. And H1 CK, fires of H1 CK, H1 CK more or less classifies the, all the PV extensions for the same. Th so, 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 the, so the answer is yes. Okay, H one as long as it's one it has to be one to, to find a group to work with. But, but you know this. You, you told me this. <laughs> yeah, did you? you told me. So this is Gal homology. Okay, so finalness is this is what we what the is. And this is related to a lot of things in, in sort of arithmetic geometry, isn't it? Plays a big role in arithmetic geometry and stuff. Cohomology things. And my question is a little different. Different question, sorry. Um, 
it's a uniform condition on the number of extensions in degree n. Oh, oh, that. So does does that relate in any way to the number of extensions? I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, I don't know. I, I mentioned similar. I mentioned related things a bit later. Okay, but th sorry, I didn't understand that. I thought you meant something. Else. Sorry. Good. Uh, B. B is a differential gamma conversion. Or what, what Colchin called constraint commodities. So here you have a differential field, okay, it can be several, it can be several derivations, commuting, but I start with one derivation. And we have now a differential algebraic group. Defined over K. This is just, it just is a definable group of DCF0. Just a definable group. That's a differential algebraic group. But it has the structure of a differential algebraic variety in terms of culture, but we don't have to know that. It's a definable group. And we know these definable groups always live a subgroup of actual algebraic groups. Okay? And uh, lots of definable groups. So there are a lot of definable groups around. I'm not getting into to describe all these things, but maybe, I mean, so. So Phyllis did a, I'm going to use what Phyllis did a, a, a description of, of uh, linear differential algebraic groups, an old paper in the 60s or 70s. I'll use terms of Phyllis's work. So are we interested in, okay, so there are, there's lots of examples. I mean, even, even for, you know, for model theorists, we even include things like the Manning kernels, which are related to diophant geometry. They get a Boolean variety, and this is an algebraic group that has the smallest finite morning rank definable Zariski dense group called Manning kernel, and these things have been, played a big role in Mordial Lang characteristic zero. Okay. Differential algebra played a big role in diophant Anyway, so we have, so what is, what is H1? So H1, say G, can also be defined in terms of co-cycles from what? Co-cycles from the uh, uh, automorphism group of the differential closure of K over K to the points of G. The differential closure is like the prime model over K. It's a differentially closed field. Differentially closed field is an analog of algebraic closed field. Differentially, we can do it like this, but it also Suitable cocycles. What do you call them? And at some point, I gave, a, I gave an account of this in a thing I wrote a long time ago for arbitrary model theory context. You can talk about Gallup homology in an arbitrary model theory context and just do prime models and things. Doesn't matter. But uh, equivalently, it's also a pointed set. It classifies, you define it, classifies differential algebraic. PHSs for G up to K definable G isomorphism. So we have a PHS for G is now going to be a define think of it as a different for a differential algebraic for you use a definable set over K on which G is definably over K acting regularly again. And again, we have the notion of two things being isomorphic, which means it's a there's a k-definable isomorphism, which just means a morphism in the sense of algebraic geom of differential algebraic geometry, which respects the g-action. So you have the same thing, exactly the same thing, for uh, the different in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a category of differential algebraic varieties that most people here know well. If you don't know it, just think about definable in differentially closed fields, and that's quantify free definable because it's a quantified dimension. Okay. And uh, good. And he called this uh, constrained cohomology because constrained because Colchin thought of the differential closure of K as the constrained closure. 
as we define, so we call it constraint homology. In fact, I will sometimes call it, it's funny, he had, he had these two books, big books, and the first book, he had lots of cohomology going on, and he, and he had a notion of differential rational cohomology in the first book, which is different from this. It's connected with, it's connected with the Galois theory, with actually with Galois groups. Yeah. So, so he has, and, and I wrote something actually with, with Zoe a couple of years ago, what was it called? Maybe I, I think that's Phyllis, Phyllis has seen it. I wrote something called Generalized Pickup SO Extension yeah. to Differential Global Homology, in which we actually discuss, maybe a little bit heuristically, all the Colchin homology theories and their relation, relation with each other. Also, Colchin has his own special language, which was different from, you know, we know his, his own like, unique language for doing everything. You know, so, uh, so, so even Usually, algebraic geometry he had his own way of talking about it. But we discussed in that paper his interaction between all these various cohomology theories. Uh, good. So we have this. Is this okay? Differential level cohomology? Of course, yeah? So you take this differential algebraic group embedded in an algebraic group. Yeah. Now, Sayer tells you that the H1. It's finite, yeah. It's finite. Yeah, this, yeah. This, is, this is the key thing. How do you relate? How can you relate the finiteness in the sense of algebraic groups? And that's, this, this is the key point, actually. But it's basically descent theory. It's that's, how this, get, that's how you get the co-cycle condition. It's all about descent theory. It's all about descent theory. Well, it's about, yeah, it's about this, it's, well, descent theory. It's having a point to me. It's having a, you yeah. know. If you want, it's descent theory. Yeah, but it's, it's about having a, having a K point and... Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But connecting it with the orbital cohomology is the crucial thing technically in the proof which we talk about. Now, as I said, Serre, as I said, that uh, what did I just write? What did I just write? I just wrote this, right? Yeah. You have to write C. What? C yeah. You just finished B. This is B. I have B. But what did, okay, so yeah, go here, right? Yeah. So C is said. So C proves that K bounded as a field, which means again, five least inch degree n for every n. Equivalently, the absolute Galois group as a profinite group has only finitely many open subgroups of a given index. Same thing, okay? So take the take absolute Galois group of K as a profinite group, it has only finitely many open subgroups of a fix of a given index N. Same thing. What would be some examples of this? Hmm? F property. Well, uh, pseudo-finite fields, reals, piadics. Uh, uh, bounded PAC fields, bounded comes to the picture. Uh, Thank you. Okay. I, in fact, it's funny. The, the funny thing here is that is that all the is that all the nice fields from the model theory point of view. So there's certain fields which we understand just as straight fields. You know, we understand very well. Uh, they all they all have the property of being bounded. The, the examples I gave. Uh, I don't know what, what, what happens with the Henselian, Henselian, other Henselian fields. Uh, I don't know, the DP minimal things, you know, what, what goes on with this stuff. I mean, I ask students to look at this stuff, these DP minimal fields and Hens various Henselian valid fields. Uh, anyway, this is, this is a, okay, uh, but piadics, I'm still going to find what else did I say? Okay. <laughs> Sir? Finish the sentence. Uh, Proving K bounded implies H1 K G is finite for linear algebraic group any linear algebraic group G. And by the way, there's, there's lots of sort of but this algebraic group really is important. I mean, there are, just in the background, there are other important things. Right? Hilbert, Hilbert 90. Is it Hilbert 90? Is that right? It says uh, H1 K G L N equals tri is trivial. 
for all k, let's say counting zero, over at 90. So G of n, and this actually explains, this is relevant to Galois theory, because it explains why in the Compton theory, if you have a strongly normal extension of a field, differential field, which is uh, a strongly normal extension, which, uh, of a field whose, whose, whose Galois group is linear, then actually it's, it's obtained from a linear differential equation on, on G at N, using this, this use Hilbert, not Hilbert, Hilbert, Hilbert to the 90. And other things, you know, K of finite field, implies H1 KG is trivial, trivial for any algebraic group connected this is set, this is Lang, Lang's theorem so, so, you know, the, uh, the use of Galois cohomology in kind of algebraic groups and things there's a big a book by these Russian people which they called PR, Platonov Rapinchuk, called algebraic number theory, which has a, which did, a lot of it is about the use of Galois cohomology in algebraic groups, in, you know, over over not algebraic closed fields. If, uh, if K is R, then uh, what's the what H one can be? H one, it's uh, yeah. It's R. It's K of H one of what? Yeah, of, of, so K is R. Yeah, H one of what? K what group? Uh, any linear algebraic group. The algebraic group it can be. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. Uh, it doesn't have to be. Uh, it doesn't have to be. Uh, can it be some large I don't know. It doesn't have to be trivial. For abelian predicted curves, it's not. For, for, uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be trivial. Yeah. Can it be hundred? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't like particular numbers. You know. Okay. I like numbers in general. Hundred could be a hundred. I don't know. I mean, look, it, okay, so, so for, for references, this, this nice book, Platonov. It's called Algebraic Groups of Number Theory, which I used to look at. I have a heavy use of And it will answer many of your questions. So, one issue, one question is, which is related to Alice's early question, is what is. So, if you want to prove a similar theorem for differential fields, what is the right analogue of bounded? So this is like an aside. This is a little bit of an interlude. A little interlude. A little romantic interlude. <laughs> <laughs> interlude. Pardon? D, D. Interlude. 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 Which is a motivating thing. What is, would be, the differential analogue Of CS. And by, oh, by the way, we proved with Kaminsky that when, when G is an arbitrary algebraic group, this is countable. And that looked like a new theorem. It's an element with motion. So, so that's under the assumption that K is bounded? Sorry? Yeah. You, you yes, using, using bounded, yeah. yeah. So, so, different, so, so the conclusion would be, say, for linear differential algebraic groups, it's fine, that, right? This is uh, the conclusion of the same thing, this, but except G is differential algebraic group, linear. What's the, what kind of assumption can you put in? And so the question is what is, i.e., a differential analog? Analog of K is bounded. bounded. What's the differential analog of, in some sense, bounded? At least, with, at least of interest for the calcomology of linear differential algebraic groups. And uh, to find the correct, and this was what we want to talk about first with Omar. And so, a natural condition, a natural, one natural uh, possible, natural possible choice. If you're, in, if you're interested in uh, eventually proving something for linear, linear differential algebraic groups, right? is K is bounded as a field, one thing, numero uno, and then uh, for each n, there are 
only finitely many linear differential equations dy equals a y where y is sorry, where y is y1 to yn over k which means that a is an n by n matrix up to gauge transformation over k. So the notion of gauge transformation makes, makes uh, two equations equivalent over k. Or you could look at d modules. There's only yeah. finitely many d modules of dimension n over k up to isomorphism as d modules. Mm -hmm. So that's, been, that, and that's a natural, but we didn't, and that's what we wanted to use and explore does that imply. So that's kind of a longer term project. Okay? That's a John no, no. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I mean, there are other, we end up proving, we, we end up with a very strong hypothesis, which I thought would be obvious, but it wasn't even totally obvious there. So this is a kind of a, a, a candidate for bounded in the sense of, of finally many Okay, I mean, and that would be to, only for the H1 with a group that's linear? Yeah, that would, that's relevant to linear things, I think. Uh, no, can I prove, yeah, can I prove this other thing about, about uh, triviality of this H? So we proved, right, I proved that, that H1 This is trivial for all linear G if and only if K is algebraically closed and and has ugly closed and uh, and is PV closed. You know, has no proper PV extensions. So that's related to this final statement. Okay. But anyway, this, this is really a, 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 a possible thing. Oh, and yeah. uh, what should be a number of examples to give them this? Pardon? To illustrate this. Yeah, I'll give examples later, but I don't know, but I'll give examples when I come to this differentially large. I'll give examples, okay, but... but uh, ah, so this, uh, so interlude is just informal. It's interlude, that's why I call it interlude. <laughs> it's an interlude, it's a, it's, a, it's a, you know, intermission. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> okay. I think Alice is not here, right? But, 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 but I would, Alice often says, uh, so far so good. <laughs> she said, she that? So far so good. Anyway, yeah. What do you mean by gauge transformation here? Well, you know, you have, it's just, it's, it's, you know, you, you take the equation, do you, and you try and, gauge transformation is you try and, you, you play around you with A. A, you, you take A to something like uh, D, G, or what is it? Uh, a, G, G, A, minus one, plus, oh, I see. something like this, whatever it is, D, G, or something like that. Yeah. So D, G, or something. G, what? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. What, whatever it is. Okay. So you write yeah, this. Yeah. It's, I, I it's see. a usual thing. Yeah. You have equations, and you and you, you uh, and you try and yeah, change the basis. So it's so it's uh, but, but, but it's the same as isomorphism. So any equation gives rise to d module, and the d module up to isomorphism. So same. You know. The, okay. Yeah. So, so there's only funny equations up to isomorphism in natural sense. So the the equation I was given to mention. Now, let's go on to differentially large. Uh, and this is what I, what I did so far. I did A, B, what is it? A, B, C. Now, D. 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 Interlude, interlude, D. D. Differentially large. So. This is another separate little interesting thing. So a field is large, pop, this is pop, I think. K, a field, field is large, called large, if whenever 
V is a K irreducible variety over K with a smooth K, a non singular K point. And if I write the smooth K point, then the set of K points of V is a risky dense. It has many K points. It has a smooth K point many K points. And this is kind of uh, large, is a, so Alexei wants examples, right? We like examples, Alexei. There's, look at Pop's paper about large. Again, they play a big role in field arithmetic and algebra and, and, and uh, whatever Pop is doing. And there's lots of examples. I mean, PAC, pseudo algebraic enclosed fields, reals, piadics. Pseudo finite fields. Uh, okay? It's a way of, it's a way actually, the large property is a nice, it, actually, if you, if, you have a, if you have a large field, then you could express it in a first order way in the parameters that a variety has a risky density of points. Right? How do you express it? Often you want to express, if you do logic of fields and try to talk about axiomatized things, you want to be able to express in the parameters. You have a family of varieties with different parameters, right? You are express in the parameters that a variety has many K points. And you can do it by just saying it's got a smooth point, right? So you can do it. So, so, so it's, it, it, and in fact, I think there's, I think Trestle told me that this is, the, this is actually the only way that if, if I think some, some result, if you, if being, if having a risky 10 set of points, in, in families of varieties is first or expressible, then it has to be large. There's a theorem like this. I forget who it's by. So, okay. So, uh, and this largeness played a role. We had to assume large to the constant in the paper with Kaminsky to deal with a strongly normal, not with not with a linear case, it's a strong normal case. Good. Okay. This is the notion of large. Now, yes, an, an independent. What? Does the existence of a smooth case one means that all K points are smooth? No, 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 no. no. It's a bit like, no, 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 no. You're going to have a just, you, no, you take a... Okay. Right, sorry. No, but it's like an implicit function theorem. If, as a smooth point, you can imagine you can do some implicit okay. function thing around that. You get yeah. something like this yeah. is the idea. So it's true in the real oh, again, oh, again, again, in a, a little, little interlude, is that in the, is that uh, the model theory, nice fields, in the sense of have a good model theory, in the sense of like oh. host of qualified elimination, are, wait a second, are large and bounded, are bounded and large. And uh, we'd like to independently, it'd be nice to find a relationship between these notions, large, bounded, and what we call almost QE. Okay. Almost quantified. So, sorry, you have a question? Uh, yeah. So, how, how, how is smooth expressed in the first order logic? Non singular. Tangent space, non singular point. You, you start no, differentiating. You mean the first order of logic? Yeah, I just did it. I just did it. Non singular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You take the equations, you, you differentiate, <laughs> differentiate the equations, Jacobian something or other. You know? Oh, okay. You differentiate the equations, defining the variety. Okay? So you just, you know, a non singular oh, point means what you say that. Well, we should only yes. have the many. The tangent space has different. the right dimension. Different. No, it's just, it's just, it's oh, like yeah, expressing. It's no, it's, it's oh, also okay. okay. So, anyway, so, uh, so, uh, uh, one uh, independent thing is, is, is there an obvious notion of large for differential fields? Yeah. And an obvious thing would be to take a differential variety and to say if there's a differentially smooth point, whatever that means, then there's culture density points. Okay? So, uh, what does that mean? Yeah, so what is differentially, what, what, what is a differentially smooth point mm. of a differential variety? I don't know. And so, and so Greg Cousins, my student, did some of this stuff in his thesis, was trying to explain what you... William, you can ask me the question. Sorry, you can ask me the question, please. Okay. No, no, no. I was just responding. You're about to answer his other question. Okay. No, I would. You're going to answer it, right? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so... That's why we ask, you know, how is first-order logic express concept smoothness? Yeah. So, if you can write it like that, then maybe the analog? Or no, it's, it's a mathematical question. It's not a question of first order logic. It's a mathematical question. Because the second question is, what do you? Is can you express it? That's another question. First, it's a mathematical question. What is the meaning? So the the, 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 the natural analog 
is to have the notion of a differentially smooth point. And maybe you can, and that's a mathematical question. What's a differentially smooth point? Well, you can start playing around. You know, you take uh, for, for a different, for a, a finite dimensional differential algebra variety, you've got some hope of doing something because yeah. you can because you can write this differential algebra variety as a kind of so-called sh sh we call sharp points of a, of, a, of a variety with a connection, mm -hmm. and then you could hope to in infinite case I don't know. So there were, he worked on it a little bit, and there were some issues around what it would differential. Like. But 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 uh, but Tressel Tressel but Omar Leon, Leon Sanchez and Tressel have a a very strong definition of differentially large, which I don't like too much because it's, but, but they put that word in that paper. I don't like it so much because I think it's, the, the correct notion should be, what is a differentially smooth point? And then you cut that. That's right. Pardon? I just, that's not all obvious. I mean, thinking. Well, you could do it in terms of culture tangent space. And things, but this is an interdimensional object in general, and you know, and you can. Well, so, so, so there's, there's various ways. In, so Greg Cousins in his thesis tried to develop this notion differentially large, but they, but they, so, but, but, but their very strong definition, which is the following, which more or less says, so if you take a differential algebraic variety, there's lots of algebraic varieties connected with it, related to it, which are the sort of jet space for the jet varieties, which mean you sort of start to take an algebraic differential algebraic variety. And you start, you know, you differ, keep differentiating things, whatever, and you get more variables, and you get an algebraic variety if you replace the variables by ordinary variables. And then you can ask, and the, the, the main notion is if, if all of these algebraic varieties related to the differential variety have smooth points, then there should be as a risky dense, a culture dense set. So if all, the, if all the algebraic varieties attached to a differential algebraic variety have k, k points of the smooth, then the collection of k points is culture dense, dense in the culture topology. Okay? That's the idea. So they expressed it in various ways. So really the assumption is that algebraic varieties have points. And therefore, and also you assume that the field is large. So roughly if, if all the algebraic varieties attached to the differential algebraic variety have lots of have, a, have Zariski dense sets of K points, then the differential variety has a culture dense set. So it's kind of, ah, that's, that's their that's idea. Right. And it's not exactly, it's odd, yeah, it's odd. But, it's, but, but that's, their, that's their idea. So, and their idea, there's two, there's a couple of, uh, a couple of, so one definition, <coughs> K is K delta, they also work with several derivations. They do it so it's differentially large. And I'll call it differentially large in the sense of, I'll say, LST. Yeah? Uh, LST. Uh, L L Leon Sanchez Tressel. Uh, <laughs> ST. Leon Sanchez Tressel. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll use that thing because it's a very special and strong notion if whenever K delta is contained in L delta, different number differential field, and K is extensionally closed in L's fields, <laughs> then K, is X, K delta is K EC in L as differential fields. And EC again means any system of equations and inequations with a solution upstairs as a solution downstairs. Uh, that's one way of saying it. Equivalent, equivalently, which I prefer. I, you know, I prefer this is. I prefer, yeah. Uh, that's one way of saying it. Another way of saying it, which I prefer is. Uh, Maybe an k is large. An k, k is large as a field. And equivalently, if uh, so, if x 
S is a K irreducible D variety over K with such that X, the variety, has a, I'll, I'll say what I mean by this in a second, has a smooth K point, then you look at the so-called sharp points of X with, I'll just say what I mean in a second, the sharp points, the K points of the sharp points is torsion dense. So here, what's a D variety? It's more or less a variety X plus a, uh, a uh, morphism from X to well, normally, if x is over the constants, it's a variety with a vector field. A vector field is simply a section of a tangent bundle. Okay, so it's, with x over the constants, it's a, ve it's a variety together with, this is a vector field. The vector field defined by a morphism in the sense of algebraic geometry, a regular vector field. But if x is not over the constants, then, you, then this tangent bundle, you should move it to the shifted tangent bundle, where in the definitions I kind of shift things because of the, the book, because I have it. Okay, this is a D variety. So any five, any five dimensional differential algebraic variety or type zero, any type zero differential algebraic variety is Simon Thomas shared a photo. <laughs> <laughs> off, <right> off. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Simon Thomas. Uh, yeah, okay, so this is this is a so if so it's a twisted vector field. Any I think everyone knows this. Any differential algebra variety of five dimensional times times zero. And the sharp points, xs sharp, is just the set of x and x such that dx equals sx. So it's a first order, so xx sharp is a differential algebraic variety, it's defined by a first order equation on a differential on, on an algebraic variety. Okay? We know this, everybody, we know this for the first, okay? We, we know these things for this. And uh, we, I mean, we is who's we? we Collective, no. collective. Okay, so this is now equivalent. This is Bream's notion of D variety, which which we D, D variety. A D variety. Oh, that's where I was getting confused. Equal D that's variety. A D. <laughs> equivalent it doesn't matter. Equivalently, yeah. it's a variety over K, equipped with an extension of the derivation on K, to a derivation of the structure sheaf. If K is an affine variety. If X is affine variety, it's affine variety over K, equipped with an extension of the derivation on K to a derivation of the coordinate ring. Yeah. Right? And then this gives you a diff this gives you a first order equation on the algebraic variety, and the solution set is a differential algebraic variety we call X S sharp. Okay? It's the same thing that, oh, yeah. that you know an indifferential equation is a connection on G and N, and the it's, it's the same kind of this is just a connection. S is like a connection. View geometrically over CT or something. So this is a D variety, and every five-dimensional differential variety can be put in the form of a D variety, uh, up to birational something or other, I think. And okay, so this is and in that and this D variety language was, was the language in which we wrote the axioms for basically for uh, differential closed fields with Pierce. Anyway, so. So you don't need to say k large here because what? The zero sections take care of that. Uh, zero section uh, so may not be it may, may not be there. In the, uh, not with the constants. Of the constants, yes. There's no, there's, there's no zero section. No, but I mean here you add the k largeness, but here you don't have. Why? Why not? 
No, so you don't have it. That's what I'm. I don't have what. Key large. You didn't say key. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. It's a uh, and K is large. Sorry. So this is the this is our definition of uh, and it's really it says it right if you have a five dimensional algebraic variety different algebraic variety then the corresponding algebraic variety is actually if it's x x if x s sharp is your different algebraic variety then x the cross algebraic variety you say if it has a so you say if large means to smooth point means that x has a risky density set of points so it's an, Assuming large, it's like saying the following. If x has a risky, risky dead set of points, then x s sharp has a, has a cult set of points. So it's, it's a very strong condition. It's just saying if there's many points, on a, as I said before, an algebraic variety, then there's, there's many differential points. Okay, so that's it. Now, uh, a kind of example. Typically, typically, now we can talk about examples. Well, so, so, uh, so, a typical example is, for, is Trestle's uniform model companion. Trestle's uniform model companion. So let T be a theory of large fields. In fact, largeness is actually a first order property to be large, it turns out. It's not totally, it, it turns out, in Pops, there's a nice article by Pop called something about, what's it called, the Pops survey article, it's a, it's a joke there, something about a small something on large, you know, a small note on large field or something with a joke in a sense of pop. A small note on large field is nice. Small note? And uh, uh, I lost my drift, right? I lost my drift now. Yeah, theory of large field. So largeness is first expressible. So take a theory of it, which is model complete. Model complete means any formula, it's in, the, in, the, in the language of rings, which any formula is equivalent to an existential formula. That's model complete. Then, T union delta is a derivation, you add to, you add to the theory and you symbol for derivation. This is, this is the language of rings. Language of rings. Yeah. Then you add this derivation as a model companion. Which is actually axiomatized by T together with this axiom there. <laughs> as a model companion given by the axiom. Okay? Uh, I think. Is that right? Is that my right? Or is, it, is, that, is that the axiom of. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's it. That's it, yeah. And, uh, and, there's, and there's, so there's, lot, now there's lots of theories of large, modern complete theories of large fields. You can take T to be. Take T to be RCF, real closed fields, in the language of rings. T, theory of the Piadics. T to be theory of pseudo finite fields. Maybe, there's con maybe you add constants to the language, it's okay. Pseudo finite fields. Uh, PAC, PAC fields. Any large theory of fields, you know, so lots of large fields, then you get, right? And, uh, and actually, all these, uh, uh, and these have a very, these, so these are different large fields, okay? Right? So there's lots and lots of examples. And differential largeness implies easily being PV closed, for example. Actually, PV closed, not PV closed, implies, yeah. Yeah, to be differentially large implies any system of di di differential equation as actually a fundamental system, as a fundamental system of solutions in the field itself. Yeah. Okay, because you apply the axiom. 
and the actual, you, you can think of a linear, linear, linear differential equation as a, a, a first order equation on GLN. And GLN has actually has, has, has points by Hilbert's 90, for example. So, so uh, you get, by the axioms, you get sort of, okay, so it's, it's, so it's, it's kind of, that property I said about finding many differential equations up to, up to that point is holds in a very strong way here. So for RCF, is this Singer's? Yeah, and exactly. And so RCF, T is RCF, this moral companion that we get, C O D F in the sense of Singer. Now Singer actually has the ordering in the language, but it's the, you can take the ordering out, it doesn't matter. So Singer has this old theory that he described called closed order differential fields, which he just did it and it was a bit, it was like a one-off thing, but, but it's a little bit coming to fashion again. Uh, not fashion, but it's coming to his interest. So we include Singer. So the theorem, uh, the theorem applies to uh, Singer's, models of Singer's theory. So now, now I think all the ingredients are there for our, I think we understand the statement of the theorem now, in, in terms of the words and the conclusion. Is that right? Is, that right? is, there, is anything missing from that theorem I said, right? So K is large, K is large, K is differentially large and bounded, right? And in fact, yeah. So, yeah, so if T is, so all these things are RCF, they're also bounded. So you get an example here, which is, so take, take a theory of bounded large fields with model complete, all our favorite model theory fields in model theory satisfy the conditions, then the model companion of T with the derivation is, uh, satisfies the hypothesis of our theorem. Okay, so the theorem says you take a differential field K, which is bounded as a field, and differentially large, then you have triviality of, of the, your fineness of the constraint cohomology groups for all linear differential algebraic groups. Um, and so, so suppose you have that, right? Um, so you have finite many uh, degree extensions. And uh, what, 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 uh, what do you know? PPD extensions. So suppose you have that. So what does it say in terms of solving equations? So suppose Why do you say PPD extensions? What's the connection with PPD extensions? What do you mean? What? What's, what's the connection with PPD extensions? Uh, suppose your, your H1 is finite. Yes. What, what does it say about uh, um, differential, you know, parametrized linear differential equations with this G. So suppose you you found out that it's okay, so oh, okay. number your H one is equal to ten or hundred. You, you don't for the that. constants or for, for for constants or for uh, for for constants or for what? Okay, so you have a system with constants of that that K. So what would so what does it say about solutions? So what kind of information does it say? I don't know. I don't, I don't fully understand the question. Let's talk later. I don't understand the question. I don't either. Really? I don't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's just talk about it later. Okay. okay. Do you mind? I don't mind. I don't do you, I'm not afternoon. We'll do it in the afternoon. Afternoon session. Well, no. I don't afternoon session. There's, there's, there's logic seminars going on later. Oh. And, uh, but I'm, I'll, I'll meet, I'll, I'll, I'll meet Alexei oh. in the afternoon. And we, can, we can actually meet together if you want. We can, uh, depending on what's, what's going on. But anyway, so I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't clearly understand the question, sorry about that. Uh, now, I've got ten, say, ten minutes, five, ten minutes left, can I just say oh, some, don't worry. Something, something, about, something, something about the proof, okay? Yeah. So something about, some, this is E, part E, something about the proof. E, something about the proof. So, I, I mentioned I did this thing three years ago about that uh, the triviality of uh, H1, K, G, for G, the differential algebraic group, is. Uh, <coughs> equivalent to K being algebraically closed and P V closed. Now in this situation, algebraically closed is replaced by bounded. So it's weakened. 
and PV closed is actually replaced by the much stronger condition of being differentially large. Okay, so it's a funny situation. We, we, we right, and, uh, and we, uh, one can ask, is PV closed enough to get the result, actually? So I don't know. That's what I thought first would be easy, but it turns out everything was harder than I thought. Here. One issue is existence and PV extent. There's, there's a lot of issues around there, but I, we didn't think through. But this is one thing which Omar wanted to prove this theorem, and he wanted to say he thought, and so we actually could do it. Okay? Now, but the strategy is a similar strategy to the proof that we go through, uh, we look at G, and we first do the finite dimensional situation, then the interdimensional situation. I talked about this in 2016, and it's it's very close to your, the methods can be also done via your paper with Michael Singer on Jordan Holder theorem, you know, on, on the structure of differential algebraic groups. So the first step is the finite dimensional situation, but we do it directly. There we did a kind of reduction based on semi simple and something like that. And then the second step is the infra-dimensional infra group situation. We use one connectedness, we one connectedness, and we. And that's, a very, that's similar in principle to what we did, I did in the earlier paper. But the final dimensional situation is done directly. And. Uh, for reference? For what? Finite dimensional. Well, I'm, I'm writing the paper now. Oh, I'll get you. It's the original at the moment. Now, okay, so we use uh, we use a couple of things. We use first of all the inductive, the fact that if H one delta K G mod N and H one delta N K N a finite implies H1 delta KG is finite. This is culture. This is some exact sequence yeah. of culture. Right? So here, G is an algebraic group, N, normal algebraic subgroup defined over K, no, differential algebraic, sorry. Then that's one thing. And also that if G is an algebraic group, Special case, of diff diff special case of differential algebraic groups. Algebraic means defined just by polynomial equations. Okay. Then H, then the actual, the, the ordinary Galois homology is the same as the differential Galois homology. So I can, I can look at differential algebraic group. I can look at the algebraic group. This talks about differential algebraic PHSs. This talks about algebraic PHSs, but it turns out to be the same. It's not a hard one. We use this. Now, the main case is the... Let me just mention the main case, which is the five-dimensional case. So... Main case... Or a main important case. Yeah, so I should say this paper's been written at the moment. I should have finished it when I got busy in Notre Dame. I should have finished it. Sorry, Omar. If I was watching, sorry, Omar. <laughs> I should have finished it a month ago. In fact, he may be watching it because he asked me if it's been recorded. So, uh, important case is when G is finite dimensional in the sense of. Out different algebraic group in the sense of Boim or whatever. Type zero, right? Yeah. Type zero. So it's finite transcendence degree of the of any any okay. Fine. Thanks for coming. Thanks, thanks to coming all good. Thanks a lot. Okay, see you. Bye. Uh, five dimensional, okay. Now in this case, let's assume. G connected. In fact, we can assume G is connected by the double <coughs> principle plus for finite group, you can just do the ordinary Galois. Finite group is, is, is an algebraic group. G is connected, uh, and this implies that actually G is H S sharp for a connected. Algebraic group H over K and S here is going to be this 
the exception S is, is allomorphic. So it's called a D. So this is an algebraic D group. An algebraic D group is exactly, in the sense of Boehm's book, that was the main thing in Boehm's book, Five Dimensional Differential Algebraic Groups, written in 1992 or something. Mm. Okay, so it's, this is Ali Boehm. It's an algebraic group with this S. It's, it's a derivation on a coordinate ring which respects uh, uh, multiplica co-multiplication. So you, you can write it like this, okay? Now, if X, and in fact, so in any differential algebraic PHS for G can be written as X, SX, sharp, where X is a PH algebraic PHS for H. So you can so, so you take some data consisting of the five dimensional differential algebraic group and a five, and a P, differential algebraic PHS for it. You could actually write from this. You can get what what you know what you're talking about. Ray was talking about some algebraic data, an actual algebraic group, and the PHS an algebraic PHS for that group, such that uh, H. XS, XS, X sharp is like a sub PHS of, of H acting on X. All right, so that's the, so, so, so there's an algebraic, right, so the action of, I'm just saying, I don't want to write too much down anymore. The action of H on X restricts to an action of G on XS, X sharp. So it comes from algebraic data. Okay, and now, suppose you have two of them. Consider two such. X, S, X, and Y, S, Y. Okay, uh, good. So x and y, so right, x and x, oh, okay, x and y are both algebraic PHSs for h. The key thing is, consider the variety. So these are all over k. Everything is defined over k. Consider the variety b of G maps X to Y. This is out totally algebraic. You look at all G isomorphisms defined anywhere between X and Y. Look at the G maps X to Y. It's actually a variety. And the variety is precisely B is just X times Y not a Bruce relation where X where x, y, is, but this is just the, the action, so g is at h rather, h I should say here. h is acting on x and y, so h acts diagonally on x cross y, just takes x, y to g, x, g, y, and this is the equivalent, this is the orbit equivalent relation. And that's, and that's actually, in fact it's a smooth variety, because it's isomorphic actually over, over, it's isomorphic after naming some points to, to h itself. So it's actually isomorphic to H. Okay, so you have this. Now, the key thing is, then, the key thing is that key point B e has a D structure over K structure. This is a variety over K. So B is a variety, irreducible variety over K. Irreducible, because G was irreducible. It has a D variety over K structure coming from, look at X cross Y with SX cross SY as a, as a, kind of, as a connection. Then this 
is this is this is uh, respected by the equivalence relation, and it gives a D variety structure on B. So there's a connection on B, okay? And num number one, a K point on B corresponds exactly to an isomorphism of, of a, a, a G-isomorphism but over K between X and Y. So K points of this variety B correspond to K maps between isoprotein X and Y, number one, and part two, K point of B sharp. So B sharp is what? I said B has a D variety structure, so you take the sharp points where DX equals SX, whatever it is, correspond to, to uh, Isomorphisms, did I say G? I mean H. H, I'm mixing up things. That's algebraic. And two, K point of view correspond to G isomorphisms over K between the differential algebraic PHSs SX sharp. And y, x, y, sharp. That's the key point. So, you have to, you have to check that stuff. So, good. So, uh, if x and y happen to be isomorphic, this shows that x, y, sh the, the, the sharp points are isomorphic, okay? But among, so among all these, but h1 is finite. h1 is finite in the, in, in the algebraic sense. There are finite many of these x's around. So there's finally many of the of the of the of, of the differential algebraic pictures. So it's a sort of it's roughly, I think, following I think what Ray was thinking about reducing to the to the isomorphism algebraic level gives rise to uh, something that the okay that's th this is this this is the key. It's just the direct and this applies to any G, not only linear. But when you pass to the infinite Morley rank situation, you uh, we do use Linearity. In fact, we actually we use theorem fifteen from your paper, classification of semi groups. But that paper, I was looking at that theorem is maybe we could talk about this afterwards. That theorem is about semi-simple delta groups, okay? And but you quote before that you quote something from Humphreys. Now you're working with this what you call F differential field F delta, okay? But uh, an F is not assumed to be algebraically closed, is it? In your paper, oh, I don't it's not. It's, it's not. I know it's not. But you quote something of Humphreys. But in his book, Humphreys assumes algebraically closed. Oh, so yeah. there's something a bit. There's something a little bit dodgy. Oh yeah, I liked it. Too. No, this is this is your this is your paper. There's something. So, <laughs> uh, so there's something which is formally not totally right. Uh, in your, but I think, anyway, so we have to deal with this somehow. That, uh, right, we, we, we'd like to quote it. So the point being that. Is that in my dissertation? No, it's the classification of your, your, your big theory, your big paper, uh, the dissertation. Classification no. of semi simple transactions AMS. It'll be important paper. So, so. Uh, right. So, theorem, so, so, <laughs> no, the statement is, you know, that if you take, I think you're saying Humphreys, you take a semi-simple algebraic group over a field K, then it's not the case that you can break it into simple components all over K. You have to pass to algebraic closure K. Mm -hmm. But you're stating it for over, over K. Oh, over I didn't assume it was algebraically close. No, and Humphreys is correct. correct. So, so that's something a little bit. Uh, yeah, correct. I understand you, have what to, you're you have to deal. <laughs> you have to deal with this thing, and it's like, you know. Yeah. So when you, you can break it into into K simple components, right? Not simple. So, so, 
so there's a little thing we have to deal with them as the kind of correct in some sense. Yeah, thank you. Okay? Yeah. And, but, but that's the semi-simple yeah. case. And then when you pass to the, then you have to deal with the non-semi-simple case. You know, so the semi, in the semi-simple case, you reduce to the case that actually G is algebraic. That's the point. And then you could use function steel. Right. Then, so there's a few, right? So, so in the, it's not, the fact that K is not assumed to be algebraically closed leads to a little few complications compared with my earlier paper. But the main use yeah, of, of this uh, differential large is in this in that. this thing here, which which you know is, is, is not hard, but it's nice. The yeah, potential yeah. G maps is itself a variety <laughs> for yeah. the D structure. Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice and to it, replace these huge fields we have. It's large, yeah. but it's not as large as as a universal differential. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think that's that's it. It's now quarter to it's now, it's now quarter to twelve. So I think it's about time. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. So do we have any more questions? Yeah. yeah just I mean, so I mean you, you say that this notion of differential large you think is too strong for Yes, it's too strong. I mean, so what what examples would you think this theorem sh should fit into this theorem under the right assumption? I don't know. I don't I, yeah. I, I, okay. I don't I do not know. The examples of even the examples of fields other than this. I mean, I mean this, this construction of the uniform model companion is an easy way of producing yeah. fields which have these nice properties, including you know PV and things. But what are the? I don't. To be honest, I do not know of a lot of examples, and uh, I'm sorry. What you want included? I don't know. Greg maybe in his thesis could mention a few examples in his thesis, which we, I mean Greg Cousins is now actually in. And has a very, had a very, for a year at least, has a very nice thesis, including some of these discussion of different Great cousins. Cousins. Great cousins. C, C O U I S N S. In fact, he's from Hamilton. From uh, Hamilton? He's from Hamilton. He's, he's there actually for a year now. Okay. Um, you could ask him for his thesis. He told me it's online, yeah. but I couldn't find it anywhere. Actually, so. Um, yeah, sometimes they're hard to find. Even Omar wanted to look at it, and Marcus Tressler wanted to look at it, and. Uh, hmm. But, it, but, but the good thing is to include examples, and, you know, and, uh, but at least we include this, we include, in fact, when I talked about these things in 2016, Michael Singer was in the audience, some of this, I, mean, I discussed Feynman's issue, and, he's, and I think, I thought he said his, his theory should be have this property, but then I asked him, he said he doesn't remember it, but, uh, but the fact that it applies to, to, to Singer's theory, it's maybe not that interesting. Okay. Any other question? If not, uh, let us thank you. Thank you. Thank you.